Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be having a look at how to create gravity simulations using Newton's law of universal gravity. Have a look at the finished result. Ok, let's get started. So as you can see I already have a scene prepared here. We have a planet and a few asteroid types. So let's create a scene here. Let's drag the planet in and a few of the asteroids. Let's put the planet in the center here and maybe make it a little bit bigger than the asteroids. And we can also use a skybox from the asset store that it's called Milky Way. Milky Way skybox, there you go. It's this one. It's free to use and let's import it into our project. Let's apply our skybox going to lighting and in here skybox material. Let's choose Milky Way. There you go. So now we have a more appropriate background for this. Maybe let's increase a little bit the, the intensity of the light we're using just so we can see the objects better. So now what we want to do is create a script that will dictate the law of attraction as dictated by this formula. So first let's create a C sharp script. Let's call it gravity. Let's open it up. We're not going to need those for now. What we need to do is create a function that will calculate the attraction between, between it and another object. So we'll need to get the other object in as well. So let's say private, sorry, private void attract and we'll need gravity object to attract so the easy way to do it is to use the unity already built in uh, component and that is the rigid body component so we can do calculation on it which already has mass and angular drag and uh, you can add forces to it and stuff like that. So let's get the rigid body of the object to attract, which is going to be, which is going to be object to attract dot RB. And now let's get the direction uh between them so we can calculate the distance between them by using the magnitude of the direction okay so let's use a vector 3 called direction and it's gonna be the difference between this object the position of this object and the position of the other object so rb dot position minus rb to attract that position and now we can calculate the distance between them by taking a direction and getting the, the magnitude of the direction. Now if the distance is zero we return 
in other words if we have two objects at the same location it's just going to return so it doesn't give us an error for example if you duplicate an object and forget to take it apart anyway this is more like a measure for our code not to crash in case we do something wrong when we duplicate objects in the scene and now using Newton's law formula we can calculate the magnitude of the force between the two objects let's call this force magnitude what we are missing from that formula is a constant and this will be the gravitational constant let's call it G and normally it's somewhere like 6.66 uh, sorry four but we're gonna make it much bigger for our for our project so we can see the attraction happening faster in our simulation okay so let's let's go back to the formula down here where we calculate the force magnitude and we're going to have to multiply g with the multiplication between the mass of our object and the mass of the object to attract and divided by the distance at power 2 so let's use math f that pow and say distance and the power 2 in here and that's it oh we forgot to mul to say multiplication here and now if we know the force magnitude we can get the force which is going to be a vector 3 force and we're going to multiply the the direction normalized with the force magnitude so direction dot normalized times force magnitude and now we can just apply that force to our object to attract that we say dot add force and we add force now we want to call this function somewhere so those calculations are made and the best way is to do it in fixed update because this is the functions where physics calculations are done and they are done a fixed number of times every second in here we have to iterate through all of the objects and call the function attract an easy way to do it is to store all of the objects in a list so let's create a list up here so we say public static list of gravity let's call it gvr objects from gravity objects in the awake method we can first of all if gvr object is null let's create a new list and then we just add to the list oops we just add this object to the list this there you go now we have a list we can access in the fixed update so <clears throat> sorry for each gravity object in gvr objects we call the attract method with the current object let's make sure we don't call it if if the object to attract is itself in the list if if object is not this one then we do this because we'll get an error if we don't do that and now we can see the result if we go back to unity let's put the script on all of our objects the asteroids and the planet first of all let's get those asteroids a little bit further away and let's add a rigid body to them actually we need to add them to all of them so let's select all of them and add the rigid body and the sphere collider there we go 
and we're not going to use gravity as is defined in Unity because we defined it ourselves. And now for the asteroids, we'll have a mass of 1 and let's put for the planet a mass of 10,000 just because usually the, the planet is much larger than, than the asteroids and we want it to attract it to attract the asteroids more. Now what we also must do is add our script to all of these objects. So the script called gravity and if we save and press play we should see our objects attract. But it seems we have an error and this error is we haven't defined our B from up here we in the awake method let's say rb equals get component rigid body and now it should be okay let's save it and go back to unity and now if we press play we should be able to see them getting attracted and colliding What we also might want to do is to make it a little bit more interesting. We might give those asteroids like a, a lateral speed. So they start orbiting the planet. But to do that, we'll have to know which one is the planet and which ones are the asteroids. So let's go back to the script and use a boolean for that. So let's say public a boolean and call it planet and it's gonna be false by default and we'll also want a lateral speed which we can modify so let's say public um, this could be an int lateral speed equals let's start with a thousand and see if that works Okay, so in the awake method, after we do all of this, if it's not a planet, then we want to add it a force. Let's say, let's use vector t dot left, for example. Doesn't really matter. So in the left direction. Uh, and that will be multiplied with the lateral speed. So we can modify that. There we go. So now, if we go back to Unity and make sure Marth is a planet. For Marth, we don't want anything. Lateral speed zero. And for the asteroids, it's default a thousand. Let's see how it works with that. So it didn't make much of a difference. Let's put another zero in here. Let's try ten thousand. almost there we go we have one of them are it's starting to orbit the planet let's maybe use this vantage point it it might be a little bit better okay so let's try different ones so let's try for this one let's actually let's try for all of them 20,000 Let's see how that works. Oh, one of them is getting back. And the second as well. The other one crashed into the planet. There we go. That's a little bit more interesting. Let's let's make a few more of them just to see how they work. I created like another object where we will hold all of the asteroids. And let's make more of them. Let's spread them around. We might want to tweak the speed of the Asteroids, let's let's leave it at a thousand at ten thousand. It seems like 
20,000 is a little bit too much. And what we could also do is destroy those ones that actually touch the planet. So if we go back to our script, we can create another method here and use the default method of Unity called onCollisionEnter. And now we can just take the script from the uh, from the collider so let's say gravity other object it's gonna be collision dot collider dot get component gravity and now we can say if not planet So if this object is not the planet and the object that we're colliding it with it's a planet and other object dot planet then we can destroy this game object because we know that way it's an asteroid and also when we destroy the object we want to take it out from the lift from the list up here so it's not so it's not going to be calculated against anymore so we'll say private on destroy gvr objects dot remove this So this function it's going to be called exactly before the object is destroyed. So now if we go back and press play again any asteroid that hits the planet should just disappear and only the ones that are orbiting will remain. We can maybe move them a little bit so for effect here. There we go. Some of them will start having their own orbit unless they're going to crash into each other. It's quite interesting what you can do with it. So this is it. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a like or a share. If you want to see more content like this, please subscribe. And if you have the possibility, please consider supporting me on Patreon from just a dollar a month. See you next time.